Hello again, Glenn with Wogscapes. Uh, this is my second video on the Death Guard gaming table. So this is just an update on where I'm at here. And I'm going to hold on to the camera because i got to take you around. i got to show you what I'm working on here. Uh, layout. We're going to talk today about layout for a little bit. Uh, it's a difficult one to get into, right? You need to think about... There's so many different things you need to think about. You need to be thinking about what's going to be creating too much cover or not enough cover. Uh, what's going to be an interesting game board, an interesting experience for the players, but something that's versatile enough, right, that it's not just the same game over and over again because of the way you built the board. Uh, so, of course, I started with looking at other people's work, at some of my work, uh, and then you sit down with the sketchbook and you start drawing. So I'll take it right now. This is the plan that I came up with here, but what's the problem? Well, it's in two dimensions, right? You, you can't really tell a lot of what's going on there. So for this project, because there's going to be so many uh, layers, there's going to be so much elevation in this, I couldn't deal with all the problems on two dimensions. So I decided to build a maquette. I built a miniature miniature, right? So I threw down some clay onto a board and I'll show you another shot of this thing. Uh, and I just started hacking away at this until I could figure out exactly where I want these little cliffs and the little caves and how I want this to progress and step up towards the, uh, the edge here. So I'll show you a clip of that. Okay, and once I figured that out, uh, and I started building the table, I could take the drawing, put it onto the table, figure out, now that it's in full scale, figure out exactly where everything's going, and then I transferred that, this is an important step here, I transferred that to a piece of poly. Right? Can you see it? No, you can't see that. I transferred all of this onto a piece of poly, so that when I add layers of foam, I'm covering up some of my other lines, right? So I put the first layer of foam down, uh, and then I can take this and trace over top again, or I can pull this over to the side, cut a piece out, trace it, cut a piece out, bring it back to the table, right? So this is my blueprint that I can keep moving around. Next, I got foam, and I'm gluing the foam down. Uh, a lot of glues out there will dissolve foam board. So I'm using silicone caulking, regular silicone caulking. Uh, cut the pieces out, glue them down, and then finally once again trace the outline onto onto the table and I'm ready to start taking the knife and hacking away and sculpting this, this piece. It's a fun part. So last time we talked about the construction of the table and what we didn't talk about was these edges here. So now that we're building up layers of foam, I want to talk about what I've done over here. I'm going to pick you up. Come on over here. Right. So this is MDF as well, here. So I cut out this profile, right? It's going to step up there. It's going to come across. There's my nice corners. I joined that with uh, drill the hole, put a dowel in, so that's good and solid. The point of this is that when you're building up all of these layers of foam, this edge, I don't want this to be a foam edge here, right? Because as you're playing the game, you're leaning over, you're bumping things. Uh, I don't want that edge to chip. I want this to be solid, right? I also don't want to have to worry about when I'm building up the layers of foam that you can see the seams. I can just take this, butt it up against the side, and then when I start to texture this over, you won't see this... Uh, this line here, right? You're not going to see that at all. It's just going to go straight to the edge and you get a beautiful edge. Uh, this is carpentry work. Really, I can't show you how to do this. If you're comfortable doing this, if you're comfortable with the tools, I recommend having some kind of solid edge against the foam like that, right? Okay. So that's where we're at. Uh, the next step, yeah, carving this out and using bark chips to make the rock faces. So I'm going to go ahead and do some of that, and I'll show you that when I get there. Right. Cheers.